Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 6 titled as Globalization and Social Change from your textbook Social Change in Development in India. As you know this chapter is divided into four parts. So far we have discussed about the concept of globalization, why globalization is a contested concept, how globalization affects our lives and some of the features of globalization. In this lecture, we will discuss further about how globalization affects our lives and raise a question, is globalization a new phenomena? Globalization can be defined as an intensification of worldwide social, economic and political relations which link distant places in such a way that local happenings are shaped by and also shape the events occurring far away. As noted sociologist Anthony Giddens says, in the modern era, the level of time-space distanciation is much higher than in any previous period and the relations between local and distant social forms and events become correspondingly stretched. Globalization is a multidimensional phenomena. The process is of great social significance. If globalization is about global interconnections, we can ask whether this is really a new phenomena. Was India or the different parts of the world not interacting with each other in earlier times? Another important issue that we will discuss is that impact of globalization is very different on different sections of society. Hence, there are different options about or opinions about impact of globalization and its effect. As already discussed, globalization is contested and widely debated phenomena. In general, there is a disagreement about the beginning of the process of globalization. Some scholars argue that globalization is not a new phenomena. The interconnectedness that is defining feature of globalization started long back in history and now it is a mere continuation of the old process. For others, globalization is a new phenomena. It is a consequence of the large number of economic, social, technological and political factors that have emerged only in the last century. So, while studying globalization as a long process or a holistic phenomena, sociologists raise some important questions about globalization. These questions are like, is process of globalization inevitable? Is it unavoidable? Is it certain? Some other questions are, is the process of globalization complete? Is it irreversible? Or is it a continuing process? Another set of questions can be raised regarding is it a new phenomena or continuation of already existing processes that connected the world in some or the other way in earlier times in history as well? To answer these questions, let us look at the three categories of theorists as discussed by David Held and others. These three categories are 1. The skeptics, 2. The hyperglobalists and the third category is the transformationalists. Each of these three categories summarizes the view held by various theorists regarding globalization, its causes and consequences. Let us discuss these three categories or approaches one by one. Let us begin with the first one, the hyperglobalists. The hyperglobalists claim that globalization is new and it represents fundamental changes in the social relations that have accelerated or grown in number, especially in the last two decades. They see decline of the nation state. As in the wake of globalization, territorial boundaries do not matter and things and relations are increasingly acquiring transnational character. For example, global economy has become borderless. With the help of technology now, money, information, capital can be exchanged all over the world in just a click. The second category is of the skeptics. The skeptics accept the fact that important changes have happened in the last two decades due to the forces of globalization. But they do not see these changes or processes of globalization different from the internationalization of economy and trade practices that have been going on for centuries together. Globalization for them is a continuation of already existing international practices. For them, globalization has affected only some aspects of life and has not happened evenly all over the world. For them, people experience process of globalization in different ways and unevenly. The third category, the transformationists take a neutral stand between the two. They reject and share ideas with both the skeptics and the hyperglobalist. They accept the fact that there is era of globalization and territorial boundaries are becoming less important 
but that does not mean the nation state becomes irrelevant. For them, world is certainly changing and changes are different as the process of globalization integrates economy, political, cultural aspects so intricately that they cannot be separated from one another. There are many perspectives and theories regarding sociological explanation of globalization. Some theorists believe that it is necessary to herald a better world. Other set of theorists fear that the impact of globalization on the different sections of people is very different. These theorists argue that while people from the rich and privileged sections may benefit from the process of globalization, but the condition of a large section of already excluded population has become worse because of globalization. There is another set of theorists who argue that globalization is not a new development at all and just can be seen as an extension as we have already discussed it briefly. If we look at the process of globalization in Indian context, India was not isolated from the world even 2000 years ago. The famous Silk Route, which centuries ago connected India to other great civilizations in China, Persia, Egypt and Rome, is an instance of internationalization or international relations of India with other countries or civilizations. We also know that the, throughout India's long past, people from different parts came here. They came sometimes as traders or conquerors or as migrants in search of new lands and settled down here. Also, you might have often heard people recall a time when their ancestors lived elsewhere from where they came and settled down where they live now, particularly in villages. Global interactions or even a global outlook are thus not novel developments unique to modern period or unique to modern India. But these interactions were few in number, but their intensity was not high as it is high in the present era of globalization. Many modern institutions and processes of social and economic development and change in modern India start from the colonial period. We have already discussed in chapter 1 and 2. So far, we have learned about the distinct ways and lasting consequences of the colonial experiences. These structural and cultural transformations introduced by the British had been significant in defining nature of reality in contemporary Indian society. In fact, modernity and Western capitalism, as it emerged in Europe, had a global dimension right from its very beginning. It was built both upon and maintained by global control over resources of other countries, as in colonialism. Colonialism was in fact part of the system that required new sources of capital, raw material, energy markets and global network that sustained it. These requirements led to colonialization of many countries in the world. This period was called as mercantile capitalism. Often globalization today identifies large-scale movement of people as migration from one area to another area. Migration has become a defining feature of the process of globalization. In fact, if we look at the history, we will find that migration in large numbers started around the time of industrial revolution only. The greatest movement of people was the migration of European people who settled down in America and Australia. We also see indentured laborers who were being taken by the British in the ships from India to work in their colonies in the distant part of the Asia, Africa, North and South America. The slave trade also carted thousands of Africans away to distant colonies of the Europeans. Thus, these are various instances of migration that has been taking place internationally. A small but nevertheless significant number of Indians also went to Britain before independence, which included mainly Lashkars, that is seamen or sailors who work on ships, employed on the British merchant ships, royal servants, ayahs or maid servants. It also included soldiers who fought in the two world wars on the British side. There were politicians, students, maharajas and members of royal families who also went to Britain. After independence, the intensity of relations with the wider world increased in all spheres of activities in India and in world in general. India had significant links with the global world right from the very early times, like we discussed about the Silk Route. But since freedom struggle and after independence, India retained and maintained a global outlook. Nationalists, intellectuals, philosophers and social reformers of early 20th century in India were deeply influenced by modern ideas and values. They attempted to introduce modernity and modern ideas in India through modern education, social reform movements, 
social policies and practices. In many senses thus, it was inherited from the Indian nationalist movement. Commitment to liberation, struggles throughout the world, solidarity with the people from different parts of the world was very much part of this vision for developing India with a global outlook. Apart from this, after independence, many Indians travelled overseas for education, particularly for higher education in specialised areas of studies and for work and employment as well. Thus, migration became an intense and ongoing process after independence. Moreover, after independence by 1960s, approximately 60,000 Indians migrated to Britain for various reasons. Import of raw material, goods and technology was very much part of the economic development policy since independence, as visioned by the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Green Revolution, as we have already discussed, was also based upon import of techniques and knowledge from the Western world. Foreign firms also operated in India. So, we can say that although the current process of change is different from the past, yet we were connected to the world earlier also, as these instances prove adequately. In this context, we may ask that, is globalization then just about intensification of global interconnections? Well, there are many perspectives on it. Globalization refers essentially to that stretching process in so far as the modes of connection between different social contexts or regions become networked across Earth's surface as a whole. Then you may ask, is it some significant change in the capitalist system of production, distribution, organization of labor and capital, technological innovations or means of communication that have transformed the world so radically, particularly in the last couple of decades? Well, the answer lies in the variety of perspectives that try to understand process of globalization as a holistic phenomena, which includes political, social, economic and cultural dimensions. Think of the instances or examples and ways in which your life has been affected by a process of globalization. Where all or in what aspects of your life or lives of people around you, you find the influence of global interconnectedness. Has there been any change because of this interconnection? Let us take some examples. For a large number of small producers and workers, globalization has posed a major challenge in India. The small manufacturers and industries have been hit hard due to global competition. The products like batteries, capacitators, tyres, dairy products, plastic, toys, vegetable oil and many such small products are now examples where producers unable to face tough competition by global players, a large number of units have been shut down, rendering a large number of people unemployed or jobless. These small manufacturing units and small industries in India employ approximately 20 million people in the country. There is another example. Women silk spinners and twisters of Bihar lost their jobs as the Chinese and Korean silk yarn entered the market. This was an artificial thread. Weavers and consumers prefer this yarn as it is somewhat cheaper and has a shine in it. Similarly, in another case, the fishermen were affected with the entry of large fishing vessels in the Indian seas. These fishing vessels collected the fish that used to be earlier collected by the fishermen themselves using traditional methods of fishing. Because of this change, the livelihood of fish sorters, dryers, vendors and net makers also got affected. Let's take another example. In Gujarat, women gum collectors, those who were picking up julifera from babal trees, lost their employment due to the import of cheaper gum from Sudan. Explore such examples that show interrelatedness between different aspects of life and how they have been affected by global forces. We have discussed in detail how Indian farmers were affected by, particularly the marginal and the poor farmers were affected by global competition. Do you think our life is increasingly acquiring a global character? If yes, if you think yes, explore the areas in which it is happening. Look at the differences in the way previous generations experienced the life and how you perceive it and look for the factors that have brought about these changes. Surely you will find change in the outlook because of greater exposure, knowledge about the other cultures, greater interconnectedness, interrelatedness, all of which is either a cause or a consequence of process of globalization. 
In sum, our life has been deeply affected and widely got influenced by process of globalization in many ways. The new era of globalization is interesting, but it is also full of many challenges because the process of globalization is influencing unevenly the population all over the globe. To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this lecture. We started our discussion with understanding the concept of globalization. We discussed various perspectives on globalization, namely the hyperglobalist, the transformationalist, and the skeptics. We also discussed how global events influence our lives, that is, the lives of the local people, particularly taking some examples from Indian society. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about the economic aspects of globalization or economic dimensions of globalization. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you. Mm -hmm.